My name is uh, Dr. Stephen Odaibo. I am a physician, retina specialist, mathematician, computer scientist, and a full stack AI engineer. I was born in Nigeria and I grew up there until I was 17 when I came to start college at the University of Alabama. I moved to the United States. Um, back then I, I thought I knew a whole lot and now it's starting to seem like you know 17 year old was, you know, was truly a young person, <laughs> but I, I didn't think so at the time. I, I was at the University of Alabama in a program called the Math Fast Track Program. I had really wonderful mentors, uh, people like uh, Professor John Mayer, Professor Lex Overstegen, uh, Professor Morios in Kashama, uh, Professor James Ward, uh, who really mentored me and got me from um, exposure to mathematical biology. The Math Fast Track program was a program that uh, was sponsored by the National Science Foundation. So uh, back as an undergrad, I had a full scholarship and uh, I also had a stipend and I had an office and I taught a class. So you were sort of like a mini grad student and we did these weekly seminars and it was truly a phenomenal experience. Um, lots of wonderful students, 17 of us, who uh, most of us are still uh, very good friends to this day. I was a math major, but also pre-med. And so I wasn't, uh, I never switched careers at any point. Today, you know, I, I, when I sit and people look at me and say, how is it that you're a computer scientist, an AI engineer, uh, a mathematician, and a clinician who sees patients um, does procedures, uh, intravitreal injections, lasers, uh, and so on in the morning and by the afternoon you're reviewing code and writing code or meeting with the FDA. Um, it, it's something that was uh, truly integral and it started you know, very early and I have a lot of people to be thankful for um, in that trajectory. After I left the um, uh, University of Alabama, I went to Duke uh, and also there I had a lot of uh, good mentorship um, my mentor in graduate school was initially Professor uh, Robert Lefkowitz, who uh, subsequently won the Nobel Prize in chemistry. He's a physician himself, but I uh, never practiced. And so I, I got to be around you know, science and saw it done at the highest level. And th those are also um, traits and characters that uh, percolate into our company today, uh, where I could be very exacting um, and uh, we, and that's, I think that's uh, very important in terms of the quality of the work um, that we do. Uh, and so as a medical student, um, I also, I got to explore, you know, different aspects and, and then took some time out to connect the dots, having obtained a master's degree in mathematics as an undergrad and in, in Alabama and then came to Duke, I decided to sort of continue along those lines and I moved into computer science and got uh, a lot of exposure to something called scientific computing and high performance computing, um, which also was part of, critical part of foundation building for me. Um, and then when I left uh, Duke, I went to Howard for my, I stayed at Duke for an intern year in medicine and then went to Howard for my ophthalmology. There as a resident, I, I wrote a book on quantum mechanics. And so I was always making time for the two and the two were always one. Um, and then finally, in terms of training, went on to Ann Arbor, to the University of Michigan, um, where I did a fellowship in medical retina. And I, even during that time, started writing a book on finite group theory. Uh, shortly afterwards, my brother, David Odaibo, um, who um, is someone that I really look up to, recently passed away, um, introduced me to artificial intelligence. He said, you have to take a look at this. My brother asked me, I remember, uh, over Christmas break at, at dinner, um, what, what is it, you know, what, basically, what is it that you do, you know? And, and I said, you know, I look at pictures of the retina and those tell me what to do. And I go decide whether, based on the picture alone, I decide whether or not to do an injection in someone's eye. And my brother said, that's an, that's an AI problem. Uh, and so I started to look at it and, I, and then I picked it up and immediately my jaw dropped and I said, this is, this is the future. Uh, and with his help, started Retina AI Health Incorporated in Iowa back then because I had taken a pri private practice job in Dubuque. And, and you know, so one thing led to another um, and uh, if, eventually moved to Houston, raised a little bit of a fund uh, for, to fund the company and incorporated it uh, then in, in late 2018, in December of 2018. Why this approach to impact? Um, I've, I'm a firm believer that if you're going to do something, you must do it well and you must complete it. And 
the entrepreneurship route, the commercialization route, you know, things, things can be expensive. Um, the, the rigor and standards of the industry, whether you're, the, the questions you must answer to the FDA uh, and to your patients, and the fact that um, this is not a game, right? We're building AI systems that without any physician oversight, what that means is that when our AI software, the Retina AI Galaxy says, this patient does not have diabetic retinopathy, they go home for a year. Uh, there's no doctor looking over that, that's final. There's a CPT code for that, 92229. And so those are very high standards and I, I always like to hold myself, looking through my career, I've always held myself to the highest standards that are, that, that, that are. And if I feel those standards are not high enough, I hold myself to higher standards. And that's something that uh, is evident throughout our company in what we do. And as we look to the future, as we shape healthcare, um, all of these experiences uh, come together uh, in, in a beautiful way, in a beautiful tapestry. And faith is, a, for me personally, is a strong component of all of this um, because you sort of have to see the future and believe. And it requires sometimes an understanding of a higher power, an understanding and a belief to have the courage to do what needs to be done um, in interweaving all of these skills and all of this potential and then presenting that as something that transforms the lives of others is, is not um, a typical journey and it's not a journey that um, a human being can make alone.